Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. Uh, we're back in our studio. Yes, we are. No more big, crazy areas and lots of people running around. No more camps. We're back in our dingy, dingy little studio. And this evening, we're joined by Troy Harlan and Sam Alexander. Hello. Hello. From Vidoop. Vidoop. <laughs> That's I, us. I just like to say it. <laughs> and it's the only reason I have you guys on the show is that I can say Vidoop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so traditionally, when we've had someone on from Vidoop, we've talked about one thing and one thing only. What could that be? What could that be? And Donuts. it's not Dr. Normal using his microphone properly. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, we just did a live show last week. So did I mention like... that this is our 99th episode? Wow. Is it? Yes. No, I think this is. No. Okay. Am I wrong? I think you are, but oh, we'll, really? we'll just we'll just roll with it. Let's let's just do tech and we'll we'll roll with it. No, I think this is 99. Uh, never mind. Hey, hey, someone fact checker <laughs> in the audience, can you go tell me if this is 99? I thought After Hours was 100. Can you go? After Hours started early tonight. Make that known to me. Okay, so traditionally when people in Portland think of Vidoop, they think of Open ID. Correct. Right. Right. Educate us. Tell us tell us what it is that Vidoop really does, or what else it is that Vidoop really does. Well, um, we're pretty much in the authentication space. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so any... for someone that doesn't get what, auth what mm -hmm. authentication is, is that where you're going? Yeah. Right. yeah. So it's, it's securing your your when you go to log into a website. So the mm -hmm. username and password. Uh, how do you make it so that that can't be stolen, essentially, mm -hmm. broken, breached? Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, the two things go hand in hand. Uh, Open ID has a lot to do with identity. You know, uh, it's a way of bringing all of the different facets of your digital identity into one place. And uh, if you're doing that. Uh, if you're putting all your keys in one area, then they need to be secured by something, you know, exponentially stronger than what you're used to. It's the whole, don't put your, all your eggs in one basket. Right, or exactly. make it an ironclad basket. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, uh, with, with the whole identity thing, we also do the verification authentication parts because uh, for identity to go really where people want it to go, uh, it's going to need to be secure because when things are aggregated to that degree, it just makes it such a more, such a huger target. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can just get to one place and steal your reputation, then that's a, a greater target than if I can just, if I can only get into your MySpace, you know, mm -hmm. if I can get your MySpace, your Facebook and your bank at the same time, that's great. So we really need to secure that with something strong and uh, easy. Mm hmm so Vadoop sort of deals with in all of those areas at the same time. So what is it? What what what's Vadoop? Let's see how how what's the the phrasing well, I want to go with? What is it that you're doing to secure that? To okay. make that so strong? Well, we we try and defeat the technologies that you're out that you're used to out there like phishing, keystroke logging that that the hackers can use. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, the the image shield that you've, if you've used MyVadoop, um, that's also used in our authentication products. Mm -hmm. And those images that you remember your categories for, mm -hmm. whether it's your dogs, cats, and trains, or whatever, um, the the letter on there is different every time. The picture is different. They're in different places, and so uh, someone uh, they can't get that code and get access to your account every single time. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example. Because it's not. My password is right. swim mask. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is not really my password. I had to work really hard to think Until of something that was not my password. It's probably that backwards. <laughs> or happiness. <laughs> oh, curse you. Um, so, and, and I was trying not to laugh when you said hackers, because what you were saying 
kind of made me think back to, you know, you're, you're trying to make sure that you're defeating them and that you're preventing anyone out there fishing or hacking or trying to get into your information. How is it that you stay on top of that? Do you guys go out? I mean, you see in the movies and they always have that <laughs> wizard kid hacker that can right. hack anything and mm -hmm. it's ridiculous and completely unrealistic. And then the government hires him <laughs> right. because he can do anything. I mean, is there a certain amount of that or? There is that kid. We have him on our... <laughs> <laughs> our and Angelina Jolie dial. too. Yeah. Oh, you it's forgot. Always I have Angelina she Jolie. There, yeah, she yeah. visits our office every month. <laughs> so and that she thinks we have kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> pictures of kids. <laughs> I've seen pictures of kids up at the dogs before. And other things. Um, but yeah, it's it's sort of a it, it can be like an arms race in uh, staying on top of uh, you know, for every new protection there's a new weapon that's built to defeat it. Um, so we spent a lot of time up front uh, knowing what the current weapons are and uh, knowing that it takes a certain amount to uh, just make it more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the huge things that we are just, uh, one of our huge areas of focus is to beat everything out there. Um, we, we really pride ourselves on the fact that, you know, there isn't ever going to be a perfect uh, way to defeat hack you know hacking mm -hmm. you can't defeat hacking uh, because the things that you build your defenses with are the same tools people can use to break them down mm -hmm. um, but we can make it really really annoying and difficult <laughs> uh, we can make your job miserable if or you have to do it manually right we yeah. you know and how do you do it manually wait well for example <laughs> our we have a captcha product uh -huh. and um, oh, okay. I see. So, so if you want to spam, so there's always going to be uh, hackers, or, you know, in Russia, um, or paying people in, in India to to fill out captchas manually that couldn't yeah. be figured out by um, image recognition technology. Is there a way to make the captchas less irritating? We're trying. Yes. Because <laughs> really, I, I I'm a 32 year old. I think yeah, 32, and I I can't even <laughs> read half of them. I'm just yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one of the enough things. about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, uh, you know, our image solution really helps uh, with that whole annoyance factor. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, instead of having to, you know, get the, guess the words, you know, which is fun when it makes, you know, a really bad, terrible combination of words. I do enjoy mm -hmm. that, yeah. Like cavity search. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's awesome. But usually it's annoying. Um, so it, something that's uh, just more human is click the picture of the dog or, you know, click the picture of the plane. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things about most captures out there is that you actually have a, you, you, can, you can be an incredibly smart and aware human being and still fail those just because you can't read the words. Mm -hmm. um, but with, you know, the image captcha, it's very easy to tell what a dog is and it's easy to know, yes, I passed that captcha because I know what a dog is and I click the dog. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're, tr we're trying to make things that are more human friendly. Um, and, uh, the whole visual image capability is just one aspect of what we're doing, but we've, we like doing a sort of guerrilla style testing. And so we've gone <laughs> to like coffee shops and said, Hey, is this easy for you to use? And, uh, we've gotten good results and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the annoyance factor is one thing we're trying to, we're working to make make it easier on the internet. So yes. it's the usability plus the security mm -hmm. right. and trying to make that, that trade off. That right. Because the security doesn't mean anything if you're a normal person and you can't right. use it. Right. Right. Or if, you're if, just going to go elsewhere to something that's not secure and, you correct. know. Mm -hmm. Correct. Sure, I'll lose a couple of eggs, but <laughs> I can get the basket open <laughs> without begging my head. Yeah, that I've taken that metaphor way too far yeah. um <laughs> we'll come back to so it. i like that you said that you have the gorilla testing you to coffee shops and you said the people is this easy to use um vidup has done some things untraditionally yeah troy is portland based and he was hired here in portland but you came with a big old caravan of people yep the from oregon tulsa? trail from tulsa oklahoma tell i know it's old news now but tell us a little bit about it anyway um, it was uh it was an event we uh the statistics are we had uh, four RVs, uh, five U-Hauls, six Australian tour guides. Um, <laughs> Why careful. Australian tour guides? Eric is watching. It's very literal. 
Um, but yeah, they, they were Australian because, uh, well, we knew some, some of them beforehand. Uh, Luke, our uh, incredible president, he uh, knew these crazy outback guys who just, <laughs> you know, quit their jobs and uh, uh, just decided to give tours of the outback. And so whenever we were going to, when he had like 40 human beings he needed to survive 1,600 miles, mm -hmm. he called these guys because <laughs> he knew that you know, very few of us would die on the way. <laughs> if, uh, and how many of you died? What was the total count? <laughs> <laughs> of, of scurvy? Yeah, of, dysentery, was the dysentery. Huge, dysentery. dysentery was the huge, dysentery was the killer. Was yeah, the problem, we didn't yeah. have swine flu yet, so <laughs> that's what we went with. Um, no, we, we all survived. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And um, my, uh, back in Tulsa, I was in a band, and... Um, they tagged along. We had extra space in like the back of the U-Hauls and like everyone was going to go. <laughs> so we threw the people in the back of the U-Hauls and uh, no, we, they rode with us and uh, the I whole mean, band made the journey as well. For a minute there, I actually was like, wow, you threw them in the U-Hauls? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Amazingly, That's they made cool. it here. Yeah. But in a U-Haul. Yeah, they did. Tonight. Yeah, they rode in a U-Haul here tonight. Anyway, they're in the audience <laughs> somewhere. We'll talk to them a little bit later. But yeah, Voodoo, we moved the entire company uh, from Tulsa to Oregon, and uh, everyone made it here intact. And uh, yeah, it was quite the trip. We we put up a website with uh, the whole Oregon Trail uh, caravan icon mm -hmm. and had a Google Map. Um, uh, our C C uh, CTO built a GPS device that updated it automatically, and so all of our grandparents watched as we <laughs> went up. And then there was a, a party to greet you when you yes, arrived. There was a huge party. Portland was very excited. Yeah. We were excited too. Yeah. yeah. Had most of you been to Portland? Um, I, relatively yeah, I think often, like 90% of us had visited um, just because they flew us up here uh, to be sure that we were okay with Portland. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone, that was a pretty easy decision once we had seen the city that, yeah, Portland's pretty great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, I've... And they all went to Beer and Blogs too. Yeah. All that's right. Yeah, that's true. Was was Beer and Blog where the I couldn't I can't remember the actual day. I remember there was a party. Was there a Beer and Blog? Was the party a Beer and Blog or was there it were just three the... different Beer and Blogs that the three waves <coughs> all and there went was, to? And Very there was cool. a Lunch 2.0 as well. Yeah. Right. Dr. Normal has questions. Yeah. Uh, Sam, so at Vadoop, you do um, some user interface, some UI stuff. Yeah, I so do. Tell us about how that process. What, what is it that you, kind of, what, what do you do from the perspective of the user, to try to make that UI experience, you know, work? Other than going to all these coffee shops, I, right. I envy that your, just, your beta that's testing. That's the best right? part of it. Was hey fun. man, let's have a beer. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of this? It's the it, coffee. It's shop. a huge perk. <laughs> um, <laughs> But okay, so yeah, for especially with our products, because um, there's quite a bit of sort of new technology that uh, one of the biggest hurdles with uh, Image Shield, and um, we do some uh, really interesting out of band stuff where uh, you can get a phone call, a text, um, things that all using things that a person already has, but in interesting ways, is that we're sort of paving new ground. And so it's really important to see how that's actually used. Um, so one of our main ways of doing usability testing is uh, putting stuff out there. Like we really like building stuff, putting it out there, and then just seeing how people use it. Uh, uh, just normal reporting and uh, really tailoring it so that we can get the most out of uh, people's use of it. So when, when do you bring in the user to test your assumptions or do you go out and make an assumption about the UI, you know, the UI experience, and then say, okay, now I'm going to try it out on people. Right. Um, so, I mean, we, we're in a, in a fortunate position where the things that we build, all of us use. Um, you know, all you of us... Eat your own dog food. Exactly. <laughs> you know, all of us have bank accounts. Uh, and so we know what the process is for securing a bank account. Um, all of us have passwords, and so building a password manager was just uh, uh, something that came naturally. But we... Uh, we keep the, and I, I say quote, user uh, throughout the whole process uh, from point A to point to, to deployment. We keep them in mind, but usually it's in um, 
it's in the stages of once we begin the interface development, which is usually after we do sort of the back end stuff, we start the user interface development that we actually start asking people. So it seems like you, that answer sounds to me like you start with what annoys you. Ex right? Yeah. Is that, you know, is it it's, like, it's true. <laughs> you think about logging into your bank. And right. Like, what do I hate about this experience yeah, each and, we, and every time? Yeah. It's it, most, and I bet a lot of good ideas start that way. It's like, I hate doing this. And so let's do it some differently. And uh, yeah, we start off with a part that's a pain point and uh, we fix that. And then we make sure that we really fixed it. And what we built was not harder than the uh, initial problem. So you're not aiming at the, you know, highly te technical experienced users you're aiming at joe middleman anyone who can turn their computer on right. should be able to use your products right you need to have that lowest common denominator of internet user mm -hmm. too you know that would be logging into a bank or trying to fill out a captcha mm -hmm. or you know even uh there's a term for user testing too called the mom te the the mom test right mm -hmm. you know if your mom can figure figure it out or if she gets tricked up um, make it intuitive for that crowd as well. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal, mm -hmm. aside from making things right. not irritating, is to make things usable for everybody. Right, right. because we're we're around technology, and, and those guys, you know, our developers are um, down in with the code, and, and we need to always keep the outside audience in mind. Mm -hmm. It seems to me like, I don't know, that CAPTCHA is going to go away at some point. It just doesn't seem... I mean, we already talked about how people can game CAPTCHA, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have this boiler room and just have people right. just, filling up CAPTCHA right. all day. Well, that's the the one thing. Machines are getting better at CAPTCHA as well. Yeah, I think. it's completely true. Always. You know. It, well, one solution to that is um, uh, OpenID. In a sense, uh, if if we can encourage people to use OpenID and to use secure providers, um, if we can get sort of a uh, reputation is one thing that's bad about, but if you come to my site and I know something about you, um, one of those things I can know about you is that you're a human. Um, and with OpenID, it allows you to carry this identity around. And if you come to my site with, you know, the uh, strangelovelive.com OpenID, and I know that you're a human, then I no longer have to put a CAPTCHA in front of you to verify you're a human, because I know, I already know that about you. Um, but right now, with the anonymous model of uh, internet usage, it's CAPTCHA it's some, is something that is sort of a necessary evil. I was having a conversation at lunch with someone just today about the future of, you know, identity on the web and this idea, and I can't remember what, where I've read about it, but this idea where you actually get verified or could get verified mm -hmm. through your associations with other people. Right. Reputation. You know, yeah. There are, there are already you know things me. that do that. And you know the things I know, and so you go, oh, yeah, it's 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 Dr. Normal. That's right. him. <laughs> Even though it's not his real name. <laughs> <laughs> it, really? It doesn't say that on your birth certificate? Oh, all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but, but how many emails are you getting, you know, that really in the background are were generated by spam? Oh, yeah. You know, it's something like 97% of all yeah. email content. Nice. So how do you sort out the people? Because there are people I am, by the way. I am responding to that one email I got. I am going to Bollywood to be an action, an action hero. I'm yeah. not joking. I I'm very had, flattered I that they asked. had a serious question. You cut me ahead. off with that. For, okay. Hey. Oh. And I'm going to forget. From I'm trying Mr. To, Timsey. So how do you balance the people? There are always going to be the people who are, and I'm not even going to say paranoid, because there's some, there's some, uh, relevance to that who are mm -hmm. like no 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 i don't want all of my information in one place right. i like being able to sign on and honestly at some point that's not going to be a viable solution for people right so how do you kind of ease those people that that want to have their secret yahoo account and their secret google account and their old hotmail account that they still use every right. once in a while and 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 don't want to have that um um Evenness. They don't want to have everything be consistent is what right. they're looking for. How do you ease those into them and, and convince them, no, really, it's going to be okay? Well, uh, you know, it's, it's an, the great thing about OpenID is it's, it's an opt-in model. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can still have as much um, 
uh, separation between, you know, I can have my personal open ID, I can have my band member open ID. Um, and those can mean what I want them to mean. Mm -hmm. And there is some, there's a term for this, and I, I think it's reflection, but it's sort of that involuntary, because these two things are related, you can, you can know that. Mm -hmm. Even even though I only told you this, you can know this other stuff about me, mm -hmm. um, and that stuff already exists on the internet today. Um, I don't think Open ID muddy or makes that too much easier unless you give it the information. Like if if you put your information in one place, then um, yes, that can happen. But to the people who are just hate that, you know, not the tinfoil hat wears. <laughs> you know, it's, did you see my collection upstairs? Yeah, it's it was some great. I love the colors. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, you can still you can still separate your identities. Just have you can have a different open ID for each facet of your person that you, you know that you want to represent. So, how much outreach do you guys do about that? I mean, do you make that? How much outreach do you guys do about open ID in the first place, and uh, and about the different facets of it, and and maybe kind of trying to ease people into it? Right. Well, you kind of you have to make it ubiquitous or you, that they don't even notice that it's there it's, mm -hmm. it's in the background right mm -hmm. because uh it's got to be as easy as knowing their email account to them or they're familiar with their email account they're familiar with their facebook account their myspace id all these mm -hmm. right yeah um and and like i said there's there's current uh there's current uh issues with of the open id model one of which being the security issue and so one of the ways that we are uh, contributing to the current open id uh, movement is trying to fix those security issues um, if we can make it so that the your identity is secure you know open id can keep going and the next step um, because to a certain extent the more people the more widely spread open ideas the more people accept it right the more problems the there more are exposed with it. they are yeah. to attack um so you really need the f those sort of fundamentals and one of them used to be adoption um you know just people didn't have open ids and most people don't even know that they have one but almost everyone has one now mm -hmm. um if you yeah, have a my Google first account, open id was a complete surprise to me <laughs> <laughs> oh i have one. that's very exciting yeah this was last year. I'm fine now. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 great. Uh, you know, a Yahoo account. If you have a Google account, um, if you have a uh, MySpace account, and you know, um, you can start using these things as as uh, open IDs. And I think MySpace is still in beta testing, but you can start using this as an open ID. Um, it's just that these things need to be secure because the more that they are used, uh, like the more that people realize the benefits, the more uh, attractive it is for me to hack it. So instead of, because especially if you're going to any website, instead of seeing the old username and password field and filling out or having to come up with a new username and a new password or use the old one that you had before, mm -hmm. now you get to use one of these other accounts. It's securing that account is even more crucial. So to a certain extent, it's also though that it's only as secure as the account that that open ID is based off of. Right. Like say, my MySpace account, I have a, a whatever password because right. my MySpace account, that's not important to me. And then I use my MySpace account mm -hmm. as my open ID. If they can hack my MySpace account, they've right. got my open ID. Right. Um, and some people use that to say, well, that's why open ID isn't secure. Mm -hmm. But that's also exists with current, if I get access to your Gmail email address, I can pretty much go to every website and request a password change Correct. and still, you know, or they, they go in into the folders and you're like in what happened to Sarah Palin when her email account, her Yahoo account got hacked in November, or October, you know, they, once they're in, they can see other emails that maybe you, your, your applications, uh, uh you received an email with your account name and your password mm -hmm. and it's right in your email inbox. Mm -hmm. So, so at this point, that is one of the big limitations is that right. it's only secure as you make it. Right. And so that's why with, you know, my Vidoop, which is also an open ID provider and a password manager, we use, we secure it with the image shield. And, um, one of the latest things that we've rolled out is, um, our whole image shield technology, the whole, I can send a text message. I can get a text message with a, a temporary password in it. Mm -hmm. Or, um, one of the newer things that we, um, developed is called a push to log in. So I can go to a website and, um, it can say, put in your 
phone number. And so uh, I get a phone call, I just press a button, and immediately the website recognizes that I just answered the call on my phone and I get to log in. And we're, we're rolling out uh, that as a service. So that means that anyone can sign up for an API key and start using the, that technology like uh, provided from us uh, and you can use it as a service, like the Twitter API or the Flickr mm -hmm. API. So no. would, I, would I do that each time? Would no. I get the phone call? It's just the one time? It, it depends on how you... It's up to you, right. the user. So there's, so there's um, different um, ways you can use it. For instance, like in some banks right now, if I, make, if I need to make a $100,000 transfer... Oh That's, yeah, it's I like can do that tomorrow. Thank you. Right, uh, <laughs> I can give you my uh, account number. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, Nigeria is where it's right. going, but. Oh. <laughs> Um, um, <laughs> but that's considered bad jokes. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's that in the Bollywood. The Bollywood spam. Uh, We're gonna make some kind of <laughs> joke. Oh, yeah, there <laughs> and we then go. The show's gonna get canceled. <laughs> um, no, it's it's considered like an ex escalation, and so you know I, we need an additional layer of security. So that would be the time where like I send you a phone call or something like that. So it, they can be used in interesting ways. It doesn't have to be all the time. It could just be if like I really need to know that you are you at this point. So it's like when your your credit card company calls because you've made an unusual purchase. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, Doctor Normal. I, I, I was just going to say you you brought up the example of credit card companies, and we are so focused and so concerned with um, with security on the web, and because of all the critical transactions we're making now. Uh -huh. But if you really look at bank accounts <laughs> and credit cards and PIN numbers and stuff. They're really not that secure. They're not that yeah. secure. They're, they're not secure not. at all. And American customers um, haven't quite gravitated the way of thinking about that security like European customers just yet. Because already, if you have an online bank that you're using in Europe, you're getting a hardware token to, in order to log in right. and having mm -hmm. to punch in that code that you see on your token yeah. just to log in. So one of the, the solutions that Sam just described, we do a software version of that hardware token mm -hmm. so that you get a text message and put in that number on your login process. And yeah. That's already going on right now with World of Warcraft. Um, yeah. They had, they're oh, really yeah. People are games are always going to be able yeah. to have right. the the newest technology yeah. because they're always uh, well, upgrading. Pe people they're always are always creating new versions, and that's you know, where the cutting edge gaming is be. the system right, right. getting <laughs> right and people money and toys or whatever it is that you get in those right games. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Gear. <laughs> I think they use the term gear and loot nowadays. Oh. I don't know. Those World of Warcraft players. They really are. They're probably the most brilliant people on the internet, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah I have a level, we love them. I have level 70 ninja yeah. priest. <laughs> I actually do. Anyway, but no, yeah, Blizzard, um, they released um, a uh, way to a software device where to log into your World of Warcraft account, you... Uh, they send you a one-time code and you log in with a one-time code and uh because people get really pissed off when you steal their awesome gear from their world of warcraft account and we need that same kind of you know protective mentality to be like with normal people with their normal, normal stuff things. for My online money. banking you know here world <laughs> yeah. of warcraft players expect a certain level of security that the for average american or for your identity yeah the average american's not doing that for their own, expecting that for their online bank yet yeah all right. Yeah, you got to protect your uh, your lindens more than your actual cash, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what? What is that? What is lindens? That's uh, something. Lindens? That might have been an EverQuest. Oh, is that? I don't, I don't know. know. Get yeah. off my lawn. You're mixing your metaphors <laughs> and my, mashing my your... legendary. I saw Neil Armstrong. Two-handed okay, sword. Okay, so moon, if you want more information on this, you guys can go to vadoop.com or what's the blog site? Blog.vadoop.com. Blog. .vadoop demo.vadoop.com to see the products yeah. in action. You guys True. can just type in a word and then dot vadoop.com. Yeah. It'll be something good. Uh, you can find Troy as the Infovore on Twitter and Sam is SX Alexander yeah. on Twitter. Sexy Alexander. Oh, <laughs> that's what it's for. That's what I've been there told. There you go. Um, please join us next week when we have Dana from MrsP.com. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you very much, guys. And stay tuned for After Hours.